I know a lot of us, certainly I am, still trying to figure out and process the kind of major, major, biggest news of our lifetimes when it comes to professional wrestling that came out late last week, and that is Vince McMahon at the age of 76, not 77, uh, announcing his full retirement from WWE. Vince McMahon is retired. And as I talked about in a video about this a couple of days ago, this is literally the biggest news story in my lifetime when it comes to professional wrestling. It is for probably all of you as well. The uh, WCW, ECW folding being bought by WWE, that doesn't measure this. You know, other tragedies like the Benoit situation, Owen Hart, certainly those got major coverage and they pale in comparison to the gravity of this news. Um, so, yeah, like a lot of folks are trying to make heads and tails of this because we don't really know what to expect from WWE going forward because this is truly uncharted territory for all of us. That's true. And here I am in this video, I'm going to try and make some heads or tails of what I think the WWE could look like going forward now that the patriarch Vincent K. McMahon is out the door, relatively speaking. And this is not an opportunity for me to just crap on a company or just be negative for negative's sake. This is an exploration of what this means and some of the concerns that I see. And if you can't understand that distinction, that is not my problem, that is yours. Because these are the types of things that the board should be asking. These are the types of things the employees should be asking, excuse me, the independent contractors, but also the corporate employees too, not just the independent contractor performers. Um, and these are the things that shareholders should be asking. So I want to take a look and say, see what, what to make out of Vince's retirement and what this company is going to look like now under the leadership of Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan, who have been named by the board as co-CEOs. And I'm going to start there because when I saw the news, not only of Vince's retirement, but then this announcement come down, I said to myself, that is really damn stupid. That is either a reflection of an indecisive board or a lack of a clear cut top candidate or a wanting to say, we actually think Nick Khan is better positioned as a CEO in terms of his skills, but if we don't make it Stephanie, it's gonna be huge problems, and that was part of the deal uh, for Vince to step aside. It's something, because to have co-CEOs, in my humble opinion, is really damn stupid. When you look at most organizations, and, you, and talking about major corporations, and you look at their corporate structure, like you might have, depending on the size of the corporation and its individual structures, you'll have different like chiefs of key areas. You'll have like either an executive vice president or a president that oversees this branch or that branch or that branch of the company. Uh, you'll typically have like a chief financial officer, chief information officer, some type of HR head, some type of chief of staff, legal counsel. You know, you'll have some of these different folks. But ultimately, you'll have some type of chief executive officer, CEO. And when I think about and when really good companies think about a CEO, as much as anything else, a CEO is, while called a chief executive officer, I view them as a chief vision officer. They are the ones in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, they are the ones where the buck stops with them, but also they are the ones that are tasked, most importantly, with seeing past the here and now, and setting the path forward and giving the entire organization underneath their scope a vision of where to go and direction on where to go. And how the hell can you effectively do that with two people in the same role? Co-CEOs as a concept is really stupid. Either Stephanie McMahon should be reporting to Nick Khan or reporting directly to the board and not accountable to Nick Khan at all or Nick Khan should be reporting to Stephanie. Now what's really stupid to, about this to me, my opinion, mind you, is that they're co-CEOs, but then Stephanie is the chairwoman of the board. So then Stephanie's the number one here. So why are we tiptoeing around this topic? Like think about this, for those of you that might not be following along with what I'm saying. 
each individual person from their perspective and their view, they are going to have their own vision of what they would want to do with the company. How are Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan going to be able to align common visions? How are they going to be able to set one coherent path forward? How would you avoid a situation where these two are going to be competing to each other because both of them are in charge, so technically neither one of them is in charge, and they're creating a cutthroat environment where they're trying to undercut the other, they're trying to establish their own credibility, and it becomes more about flexing their own muscles and their own power and positioning versus what's best for the company, the employees, the independent contractors, the shareholders, everyone. Like if you were looking at the first sign to me that say that we got some concerns here, that's the one. I mean, some of you are going to talk about creative. I'll talk about that in a moment. And those are important questions to ask. But that's the first one. You need one person in power, not two. And what it feels like is you either A, put both people in a position of immediate top power, which means neither one of them has it, or you try to dance around the topic and technically Stephanie still has it, but you're trying to treat Nick Khan the same. Those dynamics aren't going to work long term. There's a reason most companies don't have co-CEOs. I just can't understand that one. As far as Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan individually, like you know Nick Khan and Stephanie have certainly, you would have to believe, been aligned with a lot of the uh, roster turnover, if you will, over the past couple of years. And certainly Nick Khan was a driving force of that. So I can't really envision that that's going to change much. Maybe it will a little bit with a change in vision and a change in perspective and not having to appease and please Vince as much and being kind of subject to his whims and his uh, desires. But it may not. And it may get worse. Because part of the challenge with losing Vince McMahon from the fold is, yes, there were certainly problems there with having a CEO and chairman of the board so intricately involved, intricately involved in the day-to-day -day operations. That is not good. Long term, that's not good for any company because you're blurring the lines of delegation of roles. You're not empowering your people to do the best that they can, putting them in a position to do what you actually hired them to fucking do. That's a reflection of poor leadership. That's a bad reflection on Vince, in my opinion. But I don't know that it's going to be that much different under Stephanie and Nick Khan's leadership other than the fact of now you have potentially two points of control instead of one. Whereas there were bad things with Vince McMahon in terms of having all of that power and authority. There was also a good thing is that he was the ultimate control. Now you lose a bit of that. And when you think about all the things you want to complain about Vince with in regards to WWE, in terms of creative processes, in terms of this and in terms of that, like let's not pretend like Stephanie hasn't been intricately involved in a lot of that stuff over the past you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And in fact, isn't the champion of some of that stuff. For those of you who like to complain about the booking committees, like their creative team, well, who's the one that really pivoted them towards the comedy writers and the soap opera writers? That was Stephanie. That's not certainly going to get any better with her in charge of the whole damn show now. And even when you talk about Stephanie, like she's got the name and she's got years of experience, you know, in a younger, fresher perspective. Um, but... You know, for the better and the worse, and it could be both, honestly, you have to question, like, how important is this to her? Because here's what we can say beyond question, and it is no disrespect to Stephanie at all. It is a simple matter of fact that nobody, and I mean nobody, in the entire damn world cared more about, had more passion for, and had it flowing through their veins more when it came to WWE than Vincent K. McMahon. It is impossible for Stephanie to feel the same way about the company. Vince built it. Stephanie inherited it. Big, big damn difference. Hunter certainly cares about it tremendously. He came into it. He worked in it. Inherited it. Praise God. But he did not build it. Vince McMahon built it. It is just different. The emotional investment, the financial investment, all of the investment that's involved with that. So naturally you now have two CEOs that combined don't give the same amount of shits as Vince McMahon did. And if you think I'm wrong, you're crazy. As far as Hunter now being in charge of creative, 
Like a lot of you are going to look at that as a good thing. And, and I counter with this is like, what do you point to at NXT that was so goddamn star-spangled awesome and spectacular? Oh, because it was wrestling that appealed to me. Well, it certainly didn't appeal to the masses because when they went head-to-head -head against AEW, they got their shit kicked in. And that's a fact. And they had the WWE machine behind them. They had much deeper resources in terms of the network relationship and so forth. I get, they, they had to take every advantage they could and they couldn't beat Dynamite. And as much as it's easy to blame, and certainly a lot of that blame lies with Vince McMahon in terms of, you know, all this that they were doing at NXT and then they get to the main roster and it's much different. Well, who's fucking running the show here? Like, why are we not in greater harmony and synergy in terms of what you're doing here should feed to the main roster? But what's to say that Hunter is going to be any better? You could say, well, Hunter certainly had a good eye for talent and yeah, maybe to some degree. You know, for those of you that are big proponents and champions of women's wrestling, it's certainly no question that Hunter and Stephanie being involved has certainly helped when it comes to women's wrestling, but how much has that really helped the company? I mean, there's a bad statement. I'm just asking a gun a fair, fair question. How much has that really helped? You know, for some of you that are going to point to, you know, well, this might allow the talents to have more creative freedom. It may initially, but it's hard to say. Because all of the things that Vince used to be anal about, Stephanie and Hunter, for all you know, could be completely in lockstep and aligned with him. On at least some of them, if not most of them. And if they aren't, they could end up being anal retentive about things that are just as bad, if not worse, that you're not even familiar with. And some of you are going to say, well, if this leads to Kevin Dunn's Bucky Beaver ass being shown the door, more power to him. Yeah, that, again, that's great, and they need a change there, but that doesn't mean that it will get better either. Like, change for the sake of change is definitely a change, but that doesn't mean it's good. doesn't mean it's bad, but it doesn't mean it's good. So the whole point and premise of me even talking about this today is just to say, like, it's going to take a long while for us to really see how this is going to turn out. You might see some immediate changes that you think are really good, and they may end up working out that way, but they totally may not. They may end up being a disaster. For those that say that this is going to be a disaster, or that this is going to lead to bigger, better things for the company, the reality is that's all projection and guessing. They don't know. They don't. And if I sat there right now and tried to say one way or another, the reality is, is I don't know either. Now, I've pointed to some things that give me some concern, especially the co-CEO crap. That's the one I can't get over above all else. A lot of other fans and even the people that will probably talk about this in podcasts and YouTube and so forth or write about it will focus on like the creative elements and all that shit that's nice but you know aren't really as integral to the business as a whole. Like you need that clear vision for everybody to vow. How the hell fuck can you have one you know kind of coherent clear vision for everybody to follow if you have two people building the vision in their own minds? It doesn't work. I, that's the thing that I'm concerned about, is how that dynamic's going to work. And it could get ugly at some point. Let's be clear. I hope it works out for everybody involved. I hope the company does, is better off long term as a result. Vince needed to go. He needed to go for a number of years now. And that change has finally come. But just because it's a change doesn't ultimately mean that it was a change for the better.